Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and today we're going to explore the backstory of the Furious Five. Tigress, Viper, Monkey, Crane, and Mantis' tales will all be combined into this one massive collection. Everyone's stories may have all ended up in the same place, but they all found themselves fighting alongside the Dragon Warrior because of many different stories. The heartbreaking story of Tigress begins very early in her life. As a cub, Tigress's parents left her at the doorstep of the Bao Gu Orphanage. On that rainy night, Tigress was forced to watch as she was left behind as the trauma of abandonment began to creep into her heart. Similarly to Master Shifu and Tai Lung before her, she was left behind by her family and was forced to fend for herself. Tigress was raised within that orphanage, but as she grew older, the other children began to fear her violent temper and frightening strength. The terror, the soft and weak bunnies and ducks felt from her presence led to them locking her away from the other children and they declared her to be a monster. A monster no one wants. Tigress was confined, isolated, and felt crippling loneliness. So one night she broke out of her room in hopes of approaching the other children to see if they wanted to play. Unfortunately, her fangs and claws scared away everyone around her, which led to her erupting in anger. Even when she had the ability to be seen, she continued to be rejected. In hopes of receiving assistance for the child, the caretakers of the orphanage summoned Master Shifu, likely because of his experience raising his son, the Snow Leopard, Tai Lung. After arriving at the orphanage, introducing himself and attempting to dispel the belief that she was a monster, Shifu asserted that she must learn to control her strength. For months, Tigress trained with Shifu to acquire discipline, precision, a still hand, and a steady heart. By learning to handle and place fragile wooden dominoes, she began to gain mastery over her emotions. There were many terribly frustrating moments for Tigress throughout that training, but eventually she was able to find balance within herself, which allowed her to be accepted by the caretakers and the other children of the orphanage. Though she had finally found friendship, Tigress still craved someone to fill the role of the parents who had left her. Unfortunately though, the adults within the Valley of Peace continued to fear her, which meant when the other children were welcomed into homes, she was left behind until Shifu came for her. Come, let us go home. With Shifu's few words, Tigress was welcomed into the Kung Fu world as a student of the Jade Palace. But even though she was now welcomed into a home, many of Tigress's feelings of unacceptance continued to live within her. After Shifu's failure with Tai Lung, the master was often cold, stern, and closed off, which meant that even though Tigress shared Tai Lung's open heart and natural skill, she could never be loved like he had. Shifu was a broken man with little love to give and this crushed the young tigress. You didn't get a lot of hugs when you were a kid, did you? Hugs are for the weak. I nestled in the warm embrace of Kung Fu training. There were moments where Shifu was very empathetic and would comfort the young tiger cub, but those moments were few and far between. Over many years, Tigress's childlike curiosity, desire to play, and longing for encouragement were degraded as she became self-motivated to gain Shifu's approval. Tigress slowly was tying her self-worth with her success in Kung Fu, which drove her to become an extremely dedicated student. For example, Tigress spent 20 years punching the ironwood trees outside of the Jade Palace to build her strength, which inevitably left her with no feeling in her paws. The young tigress became so obsessed with training and mastery that she was willing to go to any length to become a more formidable warrior. And to make matters even worse, as tigress continued to get older, Shifu continued to come down harder on his pupil. I'm sorry, master. I, I don't know what got into me. I won't let it happen again. I wish I could believe that. When Tigress was a young adult, it seemed that any love Shifu had for her had been worn away as he had become even more troubled in his own life. He pushed her to have control and to emulate him, even though he was far from possessing peace within himself. Shifu requested Tigress to have discipline, while he himself was unable to take control of his strength like Tigress had when she was a cub. Master Uwe could recognize that Tigress was just trying to impress Shifu, but the growing need within Shifu for perfection blinded him to what was best for her training. An acorn can only become the mighty oak, not a cherry tree. You must let her grow into what she will be. 
Tigress eventually received an opportunity to prove to her master how capable she had grown to be when Shifu became crippled by sickness just before the villainous boar was set to arrive at the Valley of Peace. Based on Ugwe's recommendation, Shifu sent Tigress to fetch four warriors to provide reinforcements, which excited the Kung Fu student for she was ready to make Shifu proud. Unfortunately though, Tigress's instructions to find the four warriors was swapped with Poe's list of potential future careers for himself, which led to Tigress accidentally recruiting individuals who were not trained warriors. Tigress found Crane, the cleaner, Monkey, the comedian, Viper, the dancer, and Mantis, the doctor. On their journey back to the Jade Palace, Tigress began to feel empowered as the group began to see how they could work together to accomplish amazing feats. Tigress could see their skills and potential, which meant when Shifu condemned her mistake, she fought for them. But her master was unwilling to listen to his student. With encouraging wisdom from Master Ugwe that suggested she was failing herself by attempting to conform who she was to someone else, Tigress decides to protect the Valley of Peace herself. At first, she was unable Able to match Boar's might in combat. But when her friends arrive to support her, Tigress allows herself to let go of the lessons fed to her by Shifu. With her friends by her side, the warrior allows her instincts, natural abilities, and true power to be unleashed, and the result is the defeat of Boar. After witnessing Tigress' success with the other four warriors, Shifu declared that she must continue to train right away so that they could begin to develop her tiger style of kung fu. That's also when he opens up the advanced training area for her and finally gives her, after many years of holding back, a bit of compassion and pride. I am very proud of you. On that day, Tigress was also able to welcome the rest of the warriors who had fought by her side to the Jade Palace after Shifu offered for them to stay and refine their own styles as well. This event marked the beginning of the Furious Five's return, which had all begun because of Tigress. She was the reason the Furious Five returned in that generation of Kung Fu warriors. Tigress would spend the following years mastering the tiger style of Kung Fu and rising to become a leader for the Furious Five, but even as she and her comrades became famous as noble protectors of the Valley of Peace, she continued to become more distant, stoic, and cold. Despite all the progress she had made to forge herself into a controlled, empowered, and wise warrior, Tigress continued to feel the need to prove herself to Shifu. Well done, students. If you were trying to disappoint me. Tigress, you need more ferocity. All of the trauma, isolation, and rejection she had felt was still weighing down her spirits, but she hoped that someday she would be able to get past her bitterness and anger to instead find happiness and peace. Even though she had survived a traumatic childhood, had become a kung fu master, and had formed the Furious Five, in Tigress's mind she still hoped to accomplish more because she still wasn't satisfied. Master Tigress prayed that all she had sacrificed, endured, and fought for would eventually be enough to give her the one one thing she had been searching for her entire life. She just wanted someone to love her, and she eventually came to hope that might happen if she was declared as the Dragon Warrior. Now, unlike most members of the Furious Five, Viper actually came from a noble, respected, and esteemed family. She was born to the Viper Clan, who were said to have descended from mighty dragons. The legend went that the dragons had their flames distilled until it became lethal venom that was capable of bringing 15 gorilla warriors and a mid-sized crocodile to their knees with a single use of their famous poison fang technique. And the greatest member of the Viper Clan was the Great Master Viper, who was capable of bringing evil to tremble before him, and was in fact Viper's father. Now, as the firstborn daughter of Great Master Viper, the family was ecstatic to finally meet the warrior who was meant to continue the clan's noble tradition of protecting their village and was supposed to continue the legacy of their family. But it turned out that as a baby, Viper had no fangs. No venom. At first, it seemed that Viper would be unable to use the venom that defended their family for generations. Sure, Viper had come from a successful family, but without fangs, the family around her began to put limitations on her potential and declared that she might not be able to reach the same type of prestige that her clan was known for. Great Master Viper especially believed that his little girl would be unable to defend herself, leading to him rejecting her calls to assist him and to continue to defend the village on his own. 
throne. He believed that his daughter's shortcoming would make her unfit for battle, and that devastated him and saddened Viper. But the truth was that she was stronger, faster, and more capable than he could have ever imagined. But until the day she would go and train in Kung Fu, Viper began to dance for her father to attempt to brighten his spirits. And after seeing him smile, she continued to perfect this skill until she became the best ribbon dancer in her village. Unfortunately though, Viper's life in isolation made her feel too frightened to share her gift, but that feeling was washed away when a gorilla bandit threatened her father's life. Once her father broke his own fangs on the armor of the bandit, Viper's courage came forth and she snuck away from her mother to protect him. Though she didn't know how she would defend him at first, she used her dancing expertise and the ribbons she performed with as extensions of herself, allowing her to beat down the gorilla, tie him down, and defeat the beast. Though Viper's potential as a warrior could be seen that night when she moved around him like a bullet and performed acrobatics with incredible precision, she didn't actually pursue that path for many years. Later, at a winter feast with Poe and the rest of the Furious Five, she recalled how she loved cooking with her sisters during the holidays, which indicates that her parents had at least two daughters after her, and this shows that she remained close to her growing family throughout her childhood. Instead of going down a new path to rise as a formidable fighter, Viper instead continued to perfect her dancing, a decision that her father seemed to completely embrace. From what we can tell, Great Master Viper accepted the reality that the traditions of their family may need to change, but that wouldn't mean that he was any less certain that his firstborn was incredible, powerful, and wise in her own way. Oh, Father, I'll make you proud. Oh, I've always been proud of you. Viper's father's thinking evolved when his daughter grew up. But of course, that dancing career eventually would come to an end when she was approached by Tigress to come with her to the Jade Palace. While Viper believed she was making the trip to dance for Master Shifu and Ugwe, Tigress was actually accidentally recruiting her to fight a giant of a warrior known as Boar. And if you'd like to hear more about Tigress's own backstory, I've left that previous discussion in the description. Once Tigress had recruited all the warriors, she believed she she had been tasked with finding to defend the Valley of Peace, it was revealed to Viper, Tigress, and the rest of the recruits that they were not the warriors Shifu had sent for. But that didn't stop them from going to Tigress's aid when she stood her ground against Boar. Don't move, sweetie. Even after they had been turned away, they all went to the battle, held Boar off until Tigress could regroup herself and inevitably worked together to take down the threat to the valley. Appreciative and impressed by what they had accomplished, Master Shifu proposed to Viper and the rest of the new warriors that they should stay at the Jade Palace so that they could perfect their own styles of Kung Fu. And with this opportunity, Viper was finally ready to transform into the warrior her father had always dreamed that she could be. There, Viper joined the Furious Five and learned how to use her flexibility, precision, and speed to overwhelm, avoid, and strike against her foes. She also perfected using her enemy's own body and weapons against them, like she initially had learned to do against the Gorilla Bandit, and applied that to even more dangerous foes like Tai Lung and new moves like the Puppet of Death. She even became an expert at whipping throwing stars and created moves like Stars of Destiny, and Viper inevitably also grew her fangs. After all of her father's worrying, she did gain access to the powerful fiery dragon venom that coursed through everyone in her family. But by that time, she didn't even need to rely on it because she was not just continuing the legacy of the Viper clan. She was also transforming into the Jade Palace's own great master Viper. Unlike Viper though, Monkey came from a heartbreaking home. You see, this golden snub-nosed monkey was raised by his mother along with his older brother, Wu Kong, and grew up feeling like a joke, especially in his village after slipping on a banana peel and losing his pants, he was scarred by how horrible it felt to be laughed at, which led him to take out his pain onto others. As a child, Monkey attempted to avoid being the butt of jokes at all cost, often leading to him to pull pranks on everyone around him so that he could laugh at them before they could do it to him. And truly, Wu Kong had no problem becoming a troublemaker with his brother. But while Monkey just wanted to mess with everyone and pants people, Wu Kong began to fall into a life of crime. 
Now, it's unclear whether or not Monkey initially pulled his older brother into his pranks or if Wukong started to convince Monkey to harm others to make themselves laugh, but in either case, they were bringing out the worst in one another and they were beginning a journey that would tear them apart, which I think is one of the greatest dynamics throughout Monkey's story and is the one that changed him the most. You see, Wukong not only was stealing from the villagers around him, but he also made sure Monkey never had any kind of love or relationship as a child. No matter what Monkey did or how much he tried to impress the girls around him, none of them ever noticed him. They only saw and adored Wukong until Monkey met a girl named Yaya. As was the case for my high school relationships, uh, the two kids quickly did everything together and fell in love. Monkey finally had someone who accepted him for him, who didn't laugh at him, and chose him over Wukong. But eventually, Yaya turned her back on Monkey and cheated on him with his own brother. An absolute devastating moment. Cheating is one of the worst things that can happen in a relationship, but the sting would be so much worse if it happened with a brother. That was just so horrible of Wukong to do. But his disappointment in his older brother only got worse when his criminal life grew to the point where he was arrested and imprisoned. Wukong had brought shame to Monkey's family, which particularly hurt their mother, but his wrongdoings were far from over. Monkey would see Wukong again, but we'll talk about that event later. Until Monkey and his brother met again, he continued his playful nature and wild pranks, and he became pretty adept at avoiding punishment. With acrobatics, quick movements, tons of energy, and an unpredictable style, the villagers struggled to remove him from their home, even when they made attempts to do so with force. But no matter which rhino, crocodile, or ox was sent after Monkey, they all quickly lost their pants and were left humiliated. Once Ugwe showed up, though, Monkey's shenanigans wouldn't continue much much longer. Though Monkey was extremely fast, Ugwe was slow, precise, and thoughtful about every moment during their fight, allowing the old tortoise to outsmart the skillful fighter. Ugwe didn't want to hurt him, which was why Ugwe moved him out of the way of a falling pillar that almost killed him, but he did want him to be humbled and to realize that his gifts could be used for good. Young warrior, find the one thing that you were denied so long ago. My pants? compassion. With the breakthrough that he didn't want to continue to harm everyone around him because of his childhood pain, Monkey followed Ugwe's guidance and started treating others as he wanted to be treated, even going to the extent of becoming a guardian for the village. He fought off bandits and threats who arrived at his home and rose to become a respected part of the community. Monkey had put in the work to reform, but that didn't mean he was through trying to make people laugh. In his free time, Monkey took up stand-up comedy, and sure, he didn't have much success, but the role put him into the right position to be recruited by Tigris to come with her to the Jade Palace. While Monkey believed he was making the trip to crack jokes for the masters, Tigris was actually accidentally recruiting him to fight a giant of a warrior known as Boar. I'm sure to Monkey it just seemed like he was going to get to reconnect with the master who helped him find a new path in his life, but the truth was he was actually going to realize who Ugwe had always envisioned he would become. Once Tigris had recruited all the warriors, she believed believed she had been tasked with finding to defend the Valley of Peace, it was revealed to Monkey, Tigris, and the rest of the recruits that they were not the warriors Shifu had sent for. But that didn't stop them from going to Tigris's aid when she stood her ground against Boar. Even after they had been turned away by Shifu, they all went to the battle, held Boar off until Tigris could regroup herself, and inevitably worked together to take down the threat to the Valley. Appreciative of and impressed by what they had accomplished, Master Shifu proposed to Monkey and the rest of the new warriors that they should stay at the Jade Palace so that they could perfect their own styles of Kung Fu. With four fists and the ability to wield weapons, Monkey was ready to unlock his true potential and solidify that his days of hurting others were over. But after Monkey moved into the Jade Palace and he began to learn more about how he could use his speed and agility to confuse and overwhelm his enemies, his brother escaped from prison and restarted his criminal ways, even returning to his mother's home in hopes of robbing her in the night. Once Monkey caught Wukong stealing, though, he would not allow his brother to get away with such a horrible act. With the fury and rage within these brothers, who had traveled down different paths, they tore each other apart, awakening their mother. But after seeing her only sons battling one another, her heart broke, leading to her collapsing, allowing Wukong to escape. 
On the floor that night, Monkey was forced to watch his mother die, and with love in her heart for her sons, she requested that Monkey protect the family, and he embraced that mission, though years later, he would expand that scope so that he would not just look after his brother, but he also looked after his family in the Jade Palace. Now, Crane actually grew up with a mother who loved and cared for him, but she also was extremely overprotective and viewed him as weak and fragile. With a variety of really bad allergies, a small size and tiny legs, she just didn't believe he could keep himself safe out in the world, which was why she made him wear a full suit of armor till he was six years old. He was also never allowed to run or play, and she even tied pillows to all of the sharp corners in the house, but eventually, Crane snuck away and ventured to a kung fu class, and that changed his life forever. Immediately after seeing the warriors fight, he knew kung fu was what he was meant to do with his life, but after his mother found him hurt on his first day, since the class was a little advanced for him, she made him promise her that he would never have anything to do with Kung Fu again, and he agreed. You see, even though Crane loved Kung Fu, the dangerous heart palpitations that flared up when his mother saw him training led Crane to give up pursuing his own desires to prioritize his mother's health, at least in front of her. He didn't want to kill his mother by openly pursuing his dream, so he decided to keep his own pursuits in the Kung Fu world a secret from her by convincing her that when he left home, he was going to open and in. Sure, Crane could have gone after his second favorite dream of becoming a wedding planner, but in actuality, Crane continued to remain close to the Kung Fu world, which he accomplished by becoming the janitor for the Li Da Kung Fu Academy. Much like Crane's mother, many of the masters and trainees had little faith in Crane's abilities with his little frame and weak ankles, but Mei Ling, the top student of the academy, saw the potential within him and encouraged Crane to participate in the new student tryouts so he could truly begin his kung fu journey. Convinced he had to at least try to pursue his dream, he trained vigorously after work every night before the tryouts. But of course, even though he was ready to face the trial, he was mocked and taunted because of his interest in joining the school until he accidentally stepped into the course. Immediately, he sprung into action, and with a wave of energy coursing through him, his confidence soared. In a fury, Crane elegantly made all of the necessary moves to retrieve the flag that would allow him to be welcomed into the academy. And when he succeeded, he was cheered on by the other warriors. But even though Crane was introduced to Kung Fu in the Li Da Kung Fu Academy, his time as a janitor actually was not over. In the Wang Fu village, Crane continued cleaning up after high-ranking masters, practitioners, and soldiers. Maybe he did it because he was sending money back to his mother, or maybe the other big fighters forced him to keep his job as the cleaner, but whatever kept him a janitor allowed him to be recruited by Tigris to come with her to the Jade Palace. Now, while Crane believed he was making the trip to clean the Jade Palace for Master Shifu, Tigris was actually accidentally recruiting him to a fight against a giant known as Boar. The Jade Palace! <laughs> I'm needed there! <laughs> Once Tigris had recruited all the warriors she believed she had been tasked with finding to defend the Valley of Peace, it was revealed to Crane, Tigris, and the rest of the recruits that they were not the warriors Shifu had sent for. But that didn't stop them from going to Tigris's aid when she stood her ground against Boar. Even after they had been turned away by Shifu, they all went to the battle, held Boar off until Tigris could regroup herself, and inevitably worked together to take down the threat to the valley. Appreciative of and impressed by what they had accomplished, Master Shifu proposed to Crane and the rest of the new warriors that they should stay at the Jade Palace so that they could perfect their own styles of Kung Fu. In Crane, Shifu saw that his crushing claws and long, razor-sharp wings would become his best weapons, shields, and allies. And with the ability to fly, Crane could provide both deadly attacks and much needed support for his new team from the ground and the air. As Crane began to refine these skills, he rose to become a member of the legendary Furious Five and established himself as a graceful, balanced, and precise master of Kung Fu. But eventually, Crane's own restless, unrelenting, and driven spirit not only brought him to the peak of the Kung Fu world, but years later, this drive also allowed him to show his mother how capable, resilient, resilient and powerful he had become. Now, unlike characters like Tigris, who had one overarching tale of pain and loneliness changing into power and skill, Mantis has a winding tale that honestly barely makes sense, but we are going to figure it out. Now, Mantis started out as a child being raised only by his mother, and in fact, never met his dad. I don't have any problems with my dad. 
Maybe he's gonna gnaw me at his head before I was born. Yeah, Mantis's mother committed what is known in the animal kingdom as sexual cannibalism, where she mated with Mantis's father and then consumed his head, which actually happens to over a quarter of male praying mantises. And this is what Mantis actually expected to be his fate when he was growing up. He was convinced he would follow in his father's footsteps after meeting the love of his life. I always thought I'd meet a nice girl and settle down and then she'd eat my head. Especially as a young man, Mantis was always ready to keep his life moving forward as he was restless, impatient, and lightning fast. Even when he would order and eat food, he would do so with a freakish intensity. But even though he was probably just trying to get to the day where he would finally get his head bitten off, until that moment came, he decided to not just use his speed to consume vast amounts of ramen. Quickly, Mantis decided he would fight for good, leading to him protecting anyone who needed him. And over time, he rose to be the the hero of the valley. But even though Mantis kept himself busy, he felt the world just kept moving too slowly for him. And in an attempt to keep his life propelled forward, he would often not listen to people right in front of him, and he wouldn't notice the most important details around him. And this was most likely why Mantis wasn't able to recognize how selfish, manipulative, and egotistical the female praying Mantis Hao Ming was when he first met her. Nevertheless, Mantis and Hao fell in love, started dating, and even were engaged to be married even though she was just not right for him. How was an opportunist who probably just wanted to be with Mantis because he was viewed as a hero, especially based on how she later dumped a boyfriend to be with Mantis when she thought he was the dragon warrior. But Mantis wasn't able to see any of that until she left him at the altar. She was just not meant to be the girl to bite off Mantis's head, and he was absolutely heartbroken. But eventually, he got back to fighting for justice. However, on on a mission to retrieve wool coats from a gang of crocodile bandits, everything went completely wrong for him, and he started to see the error of moving so quickly throughout the world. After ignoring the warnings of impenetrable traps that were littered around the crocodile island, Mantis was captured and left locked away. Enclosed in the cage for days and forced to finally sit and wait for the first time in his life, Mantis entered a trance that allowed him to perceive the world as moving faster than he did, and suddenly, with a new perspective, Perspective of his existence unlocked, he was able to develop the patience needed to devise a plan of escape. Using the staying still for a really long time technique and summoning Chi to pretend to be dead, the crocodiles fell for his trick, leading to them opening up the cage, which of course gave Mantis the opportunity he needed to defeat the bandits. Now, after this mastery of self, Mantis then decided that he would start training to become a doctor by studying acupuncture. It seemed like his awakening made him no longer desire to purely defeat enemies, but also heal people from within. At least, that's my best guess. So, when Shifu got sick from some bad noodles, it was the hero of the valley who was called to the Jade Palace. I'm here to see Shifu. I'm the, uh, doctor. But Mantis was definitely not the person that was going to cure Master Shifu's food poisoning, because he was extremely inexperienced experienced, imprecise, and lacked a lot of knowledge when it came to the field of acupuncture. Have you ever done this before? <laughs> no. You're my first patient. Even though Mantis was unable to improve Shifu's condition though, soon he would be recruited for a far different task by Tigress. You see, once Tigress had recruited all of the warriors she believed she had been tasked with finding to defend the Valley of Peace from the warrior known as Boar, she returned to the Jade Palace as she believed Mantis was the final member of the team she was assembling. Unfortunately though, it was revealed to Mantis, Tigress, and the rest of the recruits that they were not the warriors Shifu had sent for. But that didn't stop them from going to Tigress's aid when she stood her ground against Boar. Even after they had been turned away by Shifu, they all went to the battle, held Boar off until Tigress could regroup herself and inevitably work together to take down the threat to the valley. Appreciative of and impressed by what they had accomplished, Master Shifu proposed to Mantis and the rest of the new warriors that they should stay at the Jade Palace so that they could perfect their own styles of Kung Fu. In Mantis, Shifu sobbed that even though he was small, he could inflict a vast amount of pain. And with a desire to continue to help the valley, and with Shifu's belief in his potential, Mantis trained at the Jade Palace to become one of the Furious Five, and to understand how to use his enormous strength, incredibly small size, his dangerous little legs, and of course his lightning fast speed to take down any enemy he faced in accordance to the teachings of Kung Fu. He also continued to study acupuncture, which allowed him to become known throughout China for his devastating acupuncture attack that could 
render a foe immobile. But years later, of course, he would struggle to apply that knowledge when he met the very furry Poe. Now, when Mantis first found out that Poe was supposed to be the Dragon Warrior, he was critical of him like the rest of the Furious Five. But after rising to become a warrior himself as an unconventionally sized being who understood that life was a fast changing and weird place, he became the first member of the Furious Five to try to see past Poe's appearance as he was granted that same opportunity in the Valley of Peace. While every Master of the Furious Five found their own path to train under Master Shifu, they all came together at the right moment so that they could befriend Poe, defend their valley from evil, and transform into some of the greatest Kung Fu warriors in all of China. Fun people, make sure to subscribe for more magical discussions like this one. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this in the comments. And finally, thank you for watching and have a magical day.